Hey, it's Paris. So I wanted to hop on here and intro this interview that you're about to see myself and Danny Pena. We got a chance to sit down with Aaron Greenberg. He is the head of marketing for Xbox. We recorded this a couple hours after the Xbox game showcase. So there's a lot to unpack from that event. I'm going to have my full thoughts later on, maybe this weekend. I'm going to have the opportunity to get a little more information on Halo Infinite tomorrow. So I kind of want to hold off before I go into my overall thoughts about everything that happened in that event. But I will say it was a solid event. Um, I think this is a part one of an ongoing story because I do feel that Xbox is still in a kind of a prove it mode with their exclusive titles. But I am pretty happy with a lot of the services that they've created. And Game Pass was absolutely the star of this event that we had earlier today. But like I said, I'll go more in depth about that and all the games, everything, uh, you know, in a couple of days after I just kind of formulate my thoughts and I get a little additional information to clarify a few things. But this interview, uh, it's around about 25, 28 minutes or so with Aaron. And like I said, we, we, we talk about the game showcase and uh, just some of the other things going on with Xbox. Check this out. I hope you guys enjoy it. We did this over Zoom, so the audio quality is what it is, you know, current state of the world right now. But hope you guys enjoy this. Check this video out. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And until the next time, I will see you soon. All right. So we have a special guest. We always have him once a year, once a year, the head of marketing at Xbox. Aaron Greenberg is back. What's going on, Aaron? Not much. It's good to be back. How are you all? Everything good, man. Everything good. And uh, we're, we're excited to talk to you about Xbox Games Showcase. And I'm going to start off with this, man. So, yeah. and, and you tell me if my theory is correct. I think the showcase was really good. I had a great time watching it. Uh, I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so, so excited about Halo <laughs> Infinite, right? Me but too, besides, right? besides Halo Infinite, yeah. I felt like there was a lot of games that I truly enjoyed. There was a lot that probably people are curious about it right but this was like chapter one of the story like i feel like there's going to be more stuff more announcements from now to launch right so i know there's going to be more than just this right because that was the conversation that everybody's saying like no we're i feel like they're we're missing more more stuff there's not enough gameplay and you know typical conversation on, uh, yeah, yeah, on Twitter, yeah oh yeah no know? people always want more we totally appreciate that i mean mm -hmm. here's the way I would, it's a great question here's the way i think about it mm -hmm. in the old old days we used to save all our news for one single moment in time. We would go to E3 and we'd literally announce nothing all year. And we would drop like five megatons at E3. Remember the Final Fantasy, you know, everyone talks about the, the famous, famous thing. Yeah. I, to be honest, I think like the world has evolved and like people have an appetite for more news, more stuff than just one time a year. And frankly, Pete, there's a set of millions and millions of gamers out there that would only tune in to hear from us and from other people in the gaming industry, publishers already like once a year. And I think as we see gaming growing and we see people becoming more engaged and spending more time gaming, people, their appetite has increased. And so as I look back, let's just say E3, let's, let's skip E3 last year, which we announced tons of stuff there. And then just go since E3 last year to this point moment in time, XO19, we uh, announced three brand new first party games, um, uh, Grounded, Everwild, and oh, I forget. anyway, I know we announced three. It'll come to me in a minute. Tell me mm -hmm. why. Then, mm -hmm. then we announced um, at the Game Awards, we unveiled our console, Series X, and we announced Hellblade 2, kind of surprised the world there. Uh, then we've had sort of these beats where we've been showing more about the hardware and a lot of the tech specs and um, the velocity architecture and really like all the speeds and feeds inside the world's most powerful console. And that gets us to today. By the way, also pandemic happened. Every single person on every development team, on every asset, every game, and every person producing the show, all doing it from home. Um, now, Gamers don't really care. I get it. They're not asking for any forgiveness on that, but just know that like this one was particularly hard. Uh, E3 got canceled. You know, dev teams suddenly were like loading up their cars with like dev kits and trying to figure out how they're going to keep developing games from their home. How do they check in code and all that? So we've been on quite a ride and journey. You're right. This was 
This was not E3. It was not supposed to ever place E3. This was a game showcase. Uh, we, for us, our focus was, hey, we could go have a bigger show with more time and just have more variety of stuff. We wanted this to have a very clear sense of purpose, why every game was in this show. And what you saw was us from beginning to end for the first time I ever put a show together, we could say, listen, as you're a Game Pass member, every game in the show you can play. Um, we also showed a lot of our first party studios, nine of our 15 first party studios. We announced five brand new game reveals from our first party teams. And I think you really saw a show kind of that creative diversity of those teams. Plus, we announced a major partnership with Bungie on Destiny, major, major partnership there across many things. Lysa Dyke is there smiling. It's great. <laughs> and, yeah. um, and then at all the third party games after that, all are being built to launch exclusively first on Xbox. So you saw us focus on an exclusive story, a Game Pass story, a first party story, and we did that all in an hour. Open with Halo, close with Fable. So that was a very deliberate, very purposeful, and I think we feel really good about that. Is this the last time we're going to do anything, announce anything, show anything between now and the end of the year? No. Uh, do we have uh, 15 studio teams working on a lot of games? Yes. Uh, so you're right. This is, but this this is a big moment in time for us as it comes from games and showcasing the games. But we definitely have more to show and tell. Uh, but I don't want to pro like, it's not like next month we have a second show with five more new games. I don't want to like mislead people, but mm -hmm. um, today was a big moment, but also like we didn't save our news for a year either. And we're not going to like stay quiet between now and next summer, if that makes sense. All right. Make, makes total sense. So I know we have you limited time, so I'm, I'm going to just jump right into the meat of, of what I want to be able to ask you. First and foremost, I think Game Pass was the real star of the show today for, for me because we saw the variety of games that you have. There was really something for everyone here in this event, right? And everything comes to Game Pass. So it just kind of highlights just the services that you've been building the past few years, which has literally led up to this moment. But there was one thing that I took out of all this that I, I wanted to ask you about, and that's Halo Infinite and that's Forza Motorsport. Halo Infinite obviously has been five years in the making. It's made its debut. We can debate how amazing it was later, but besides the point, Forza isn't coming at launch and it looks like it's not coming anytime soon. It's been three years since Turn 10 has given us a Forza game. And the reason I'm bringing that up is not only am great, if it's not ready at launch, you take all the time you need to make this game. But when I look at Halo Infinite and I look at now Forza Motorsport, I think we're seeing another transition with Microsoft Game Studios where you're making this game almost like a platform now. And I just kind of want a little bit of confirmation with you on Forza because it clearly looks like you're doing that with Halo Infinite. But then I even look at Forza Motorsport, you're getting away from, hey, this is Forza 8, 9, 10. No, this is Forza Motorsport, the platform that this game will live on and we will iterate with it over time. So is that an accurate assessment? Just just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, it's a great, great question, Paris. You're right. First, your Game Pass was the star of the show today. And, um, you know, I think that that was something we really want to make clear. We've dreamed of being able to do an entire show of games, all being able to say coming in Game Pass. So we've never been able to do that. Today we were. I think that's a huge milestone. Um, we are giving our we're our development teams first off our internal teams are being given more resource and more focus to be able to go and really rethink what the future of gaming and what the future of our platforms mean yes so what that means is that a team like turn 10 who has 15 years of building the highest rated best-selling racing franchise in gaming period now gets to like completely reimagine what the motorsport franchise can be. So they're going to take all the learnings of the last 15 years and pair that with like new game concepts and innovation. And in a world where more than 10 million game pass members where the world where this game becomes included for you on console and PC at no additional cost. Like we don't have to add a number to add more innovation and yeah, add more content exactly. for you. Um, so that is the mindset. So giving the greatest developers in the racing genre, the opportunity to completely reimagine a couple things. One, give them time because if you give people, you give the greatest developers in the world more time to do that. The bar goes like way up on like the potential and the opportunity. And it like empties like the, just 
rethinking everything. And that team is like so brilliant, so talented, cares mm-hmm. so much about their fans. With that said, like they are still managing in partnership with Playground, the Forza franchise and Horizon. So what you're also seeing is we're saying, listen, I mean, Horizon's had a ton of updates. We're still adding more content to Horizon. We're going to fully optimize Horizon in 4K60 at launch for Series X this holiday. So racing fans will be able to not only play motorsport, they can play Horizon, and we're going to give Horizon all the bells and whistles at the same time. And then allow another team at Playground to go off and work on uh, Fable, yes. you know, a whole new beginning for like one of the world's most legendary franchises, and another team to go off and work on reimagining motorsport. So that's kind of the vision for us. That is a big strategic kind of more longer term vision, um, but we think fits with our kind of mindset around, we have we have Halo Infinite this holiday, you know, that having a killer app for the launch of a new console, we haven't had that since the original Xbox. So we feel really good about that. We have over a hundred games that will be optimized for Series X. We'll have four generations of games to play at launch. So the amount of games to play that we'll be showcasing 4K 60, you know, Ori Will the Wisp is going to be showing 120 frames. I mean, God bless Moon Studios. So, like, all that, we think gamers will be fully delighted and we can deliver on the promise there. But we're going to keep delivering more content, more innovation. And some of those are coming this year, some are coming next year, and some are coming after that. Um, and so we showed a little bit more of our hand today on that, but that is kind of how we're thinking about it strategically. Yeah. Does that answer your question? No, it, it absolutely does because that's kind of. The, the, the synergy of what you're doing now, having Game Pass and, and the fact that this, it, it's clearly the future. I mean, I even tweeted it earlier. And the fact that you now don't have to rely on sequels because you have Game Pass subscribers. So they're already guaranteed to get these games. So instead of worrying about, let's crank out the latest and greatest sequel with a number on it, take the platform of the game you have, let the developers continue to build upon what they've already started. And that that's what excites me more than anything. That's why I look at something like Halo Infinite and the possibilities with this open world is now endless. Obviously you're gonna have the multiplayer that goes with that as well, but that's what excites me more than anything to see that you're taking the services along with the develop, development talent and basically combining them together and just making this one service and platform where creativity is king versus yeah. making sure we get to the next great thing. The next great thing might already be here. Let's just keep building on it. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. It's very purposeful and you're spot on with that observation. And I would say, if you looked back a couple of years ago at like the blockbuster movie industry, and you know, I feel like in some ways people are saying, hey, how come you're not making a Mission Impossible 7? And we're like, actually, no, we're completely reinventing the way we think you know, our entertainment form could be made. And yes, we'll have the Irishman equivalent. We'll have big AAA experiences. Right. Right. But, um, you know, today people are spending a lot more time watching, you know, movies as a service, right? And we think that gaming, you know, is kind of heading in the same direction. Um, and Game Pass is a great testament to that. I think the other piece there is that not just for us, but also like we designed Game Pass to not just be a great value for our gamers, but also for developers. And while we've seen a lot of you know indie developers and mid-tier developers supporting the platform to be able to see really prestige games like stalker 2 saying we're coming day and date seeing you know some of the best third-party developers in the world like bungie say listen we're all in on game pass um, i think is really a testament to the service and what we're seeing is people in the service play more games spend more time playing games drive more engagement um, play a lot of games that would have never bought and ultimately, that's good for gamers, that's good for developers, and that's good for the ecosystem problem. Absolutely. Yeah. You know one thing, uh, Aaron, that I really enjoy about Game Pass 2 is that you guys are adding a lot more Japanese games now, too, in there. So I know the announcement today was Dragon Quest. That's like a huge, big one because I'm a huge fan of JRPG, right? Um, also, Tetris Effect Connect, uh, Connected. Uh, Fanny Star Online 2, uh, the 20th anniversary. Like, I'm a huge fan of that game, too. So it's good to see more games now coming from Japanese studios and also available for Xbox Game Pass. I think that's going to be a big thing for, for you guys, too. Yeah, I mean, we're listening to our fans a lot on that. And, Danny, you're not alone. Like, there's a lot of fans that are just just in the same space you are. 
Um, mm -hmm. I mean, basically, every time we send Phil Spencer over to Japan in an airplane, he comes back with like a box of goodies. So uh, we're going to keep sending Phil to Japan as, as, as whenever we safely can. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's great to have Square being able to trust us to unveil brand new, brand new titles, to be able to finally bring Dragon Quest to Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Uh, Fantasy Star is a, a console launch exclusive. Um, yeah, it's just been great. We're seeing unprecedented Japanese support. We know our fans want that, and you should know that we're really focused on uh, on delivering that for our fans. And it's great to see such great support from the Japanese yeah. development community as well. Yeah, uh, one thing, um, Aaron. Like, I know other companies would say that um, you guys have been saying this for a while that you're now forcing the gamer to actually buy Series X. For if they want to play Halo Infinite, you could still play it on Xbox One. You could play on your phone, other devices, right? Why that is so important for you guys to not leave gamers behind and not force them to buy a Series X if they want to enjoy this? These yeah, games. I mean, I think that historically, like the way the console industry works is that when you do move from one generation to the next, like you kind of lose all the compatibility. And that's all done and designed to try to get you to buy the console. Um, and we just have gone, have gone through this list of, you know, you could argue, you know, anti-consumer practices where we felt like didn't put the player first and weren't right by gamers. And so we've gone through that list and try to one by one just, just remove them in our kind of approach to the next gen. So um, are we going to bring Halo Infinite to Xbox One and Series X? Yes. Um, are we going to put in Game Pass at launch? Yes. If you get a Series X a year from now, are we going to charge you again for the next gen version of the game? No. If you want to play Halo Infinite on the PC, are we going to charge you for that? No. Like, so we're really, and listen, as a gamer, that's the way it should be. If I buy your game or subscribe to your service that includes the game, why should I have to pay again for the same game? Um, on another device. We don't believe that's the way the industry should work. And if you put gamers first, that's not how it should be. And so, um, you know, I'm really proud of what Phil and the team have been leading there, um, really with that player's first focus. And ultimately, I think that has long-term benefits for the brand and for the business, but, um, but our bet is on doing what's right by our players. So two things. Uh First of, all, first of all, my dog continues to want to be the star of the show whenever I get on video. That's what happens when you work from home. But, uh, <laughs> but two things. Uh, Flight Simulator. I noticed that it was not a part of this event. We, I know, we know it's coming to PC in August, yeah. but yeah. I really thought it potentially would have been at launch for the Series X. We didn't hear anything on that, but we did hear about Gears Tactics. And the second thing along those lines, your backwards compatibility plan. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked about it a little bit, Phil talked about it a little bit even this event, but are there plans to elaborate on that further as, as we get closer to launch just about how Series X is going to utilize backwards compatibility i mean literally going all the way back to the original xbox like as an example mm -hmm. something like crimson skies it being backwards compatible on the series x can we expect enhancements things like that will there be further discussion also on those type of things yeah yeah so first your question on flight is yes flight is not only probably one of the most beautiful games you've ever made it actually probably leverages the most amount of advanced technology and even Microsoft technology across the entire company of any game we've ever made. Um, the team at Sobo and our publishing team, what they are creating with that is something truly special. Um, we are, we listen, with the PC gamer and particularly the flight enthusiast community, who is our primary audience uh, for that product, they spend a lot of time in that. Is that you too? That's great yeah. to hear. Like mm -hmm. we're we're building this product for them first and foremost. And if you if you don't optimize for a very specific audience that are really thoughtful about listening to them and building something from the ground up for them, um, you'll have a hard time, you know, delivering from that audience. So that's what we're doing. So we're building it first with a PC. You know, it really it's not a game; it's a simulator. It is a true simulator. It's a next-gen simulator that has such incredible level of realism. And so we're excited to have that coming in September. We're bringing that, you know, around the world. We're actually seeing really, really positive response early for that. And we will bring that to Xbox. Absolutely our plan. Um, now, we have a series of other games that we are going and um, updating, whether it's Ori Will the Wisps, whether it's Forza Horizon 4, 
Sea of Thieves, Gears 5, like all those things will be optimized to take full advantage of Xbox Series X and the power of that hardware. Now, that's another player first thing because we're going to go have dev teams spend time right. doing that work. This isn't just every game looks and plays better if you get the upgrade to the performance. They're actually going in and optimizing so that it will look really, really take advantage of that. So that's time and dev effort to do that. When we do that, we do that at zero cost to our to our fans because we give all those upgrades for free. Um, in addition to that, you'll have the four generations of compatibility. I would say, listen, it'll be up to each dev team how much they want to go back and go optimize those older games. They will not do that across the board because a team that goes and focuses on that means that they can't go work on the next thing. So we have to kind of prioritize and balance. So we're looking at games that have large communities, have engaged communities that we think are going to really want and care about that investment and those benefits. Forza Horizon 4, I think, is a great example of that. Um, Gears 5 is a great example of yes. that, where they have a lot of add-on content. They're still investing and in adding more content for those teams and those communities, and to be able to double the frame rates and jump to 4K60 and add uh, all the benefits of next-gen for those titles, I think, are worthy investments. Um, I'm not sure. To be honest, Crimson Skies fits in that same bucket, but... Will Crimson Skies load faster or Crimson Skies look better? Yes, uh, which is just the beauty of having the benefit of the additional power. Well, I think even a sneak peek along those lines is is Halo 3 right now as part of Master Chief Collection on PC. Almost feels like a new game, playing it yeah. right now at 60 frames in 4K. I'm having a blast. It's not a remake. It's still that original game that we got back in 07. So that excites me thinking about the Series X and the potential level of the games. And obviously you brought up Forza Horizon 4 and Gears 5. I mean, I can't wait to see those on Series X as well. But yeah, I'm I'm very happy with the backwards compatibility plan that, that you guys have implemented. And it's it's almost like if you look at games as as being art, you're preserving them so that a new generation can also experience what old people like me, you know, got to experience 20 years ago. So very excited for it. Yeah, you and me both. I mean, it's yeah. just like a classic movie catalog or anything else, like, but not making you rebuy those things again. So if you have those games or you have Game Pass, you're gonna get access to a lot of that content. Uh, and to have four generations of games all available at launch is, and over a hundred titles optimized day one, you know, pe people used to think, oh, if you can get to like 10 games at launch, that's a lot, you know, yeah. and like this is just mind blowing. I mean, people are going to struggle with how much to choose from and decide what to play, uh, which we think is a good problem to have. No, you, you know why today I feel like it was a very special day for me as a, as a fan of Xbox. You know, 19 years ago, uh, I went to an event in New York City and I got my the first time I got to play um, Halo, Project Gotham Racing, all those cool games back then. And and those are the reason why. I became a fan of, of, of Xbox, right? So today was that moment of showing the plans of what you guys are are planning to do for, for the system and for Game Pass, et cetera, right? My question to you is, because of the situation that we're in, man, I know there's going to be gamers that will love to try out these games, but there's, there's no events, nothing. Is there something you guys could do in the future to maybe in a way for them to do like a an opportunity for them to try out these games as like hands on like for example like this week I love the idea of Game Pass I'm uh, not Game Pass Game Fest where people will download like the demos and try it yeah. out like for the first time yeah. I think we need more of that Aaron because people can't go out they're home they're stuck there's not going to be no events no packs no E3 I think I would love to see more of that in the future from you guys man yeah, that's great feedback, uh, Godfrey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're right. I mean, first, I want to recognize, like, just kudos on the 15th anniversary and uh, the 1,000 mm. episode. Thousand oh, episodes. thanks. Here, Phil, on that. And you guys have been here from the beginning. And I remember you, mm -hmm. you were there with Bill Gates at the original launch. I remember you there interviewing Peter Moore in the early days. So I've watched your journey along the way. It's been awesome. Uh, and you know, I've been a regular listener and always, always enjoy talking to you guys. So it's, it's been fun to see you on that journey with us. Um, Thanks man. Thanks a lot. A lot. Of people that we can say I've been there with us from the beginning. So, um, and then, um, <laughs> remind me of your actual question. No, no. The question is about uh, having the, the game fest demos. Yeah. Like, yeah something demo. like that. Yeah. 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 Cause I would love to see yeah. that more. It yeah. was cool to go just to the store and download these yeah. demos, try it out for the first time. And you know, 
and You're just right. we need maybe to rethink convince now how do yeah. we do all this because we're mm-hmm. in an unprecedented time i would say first for all the teams that are making games not just for us but just across the board like mm-hmm. making games in this environment is really hard uh and i would say people are spending a lot more time to get less done uh mm-hmm. and so i'm just super impressed with how much people are doing and delivering at this time so i want to be mindful of like people are still trying to deliver on all the promise of the games they want to deliver and all that and they're and they're largely doing that which is super impressive what we have done as you saw with the summer game fest is we worked with a lot of our indie studio partners and actually were able to put out a bunch of playable demos this week that people can go and play um we're testing learning kind of seeing that but i think you're right how do we kind of replace that physical experience and let people get hands on. Um, it works for some of those titles, you know, right now, uh, unfortunately it doesn't work for some of the other titles, you know, um, but we will, we do have flighting, we do have plans to let people get hands on with it with some of our other big games. Uh, and we'll look at ways um, to do that. Uh, and that's definitely something that we're exploring. I'd say what you saw this week that we're doing with the, um, with the summer game fest demos as an example of that. Uh, and we're gonna test and learn and, and see how that goes. And where appropriate, we're going to find ways to let people get hands on without having to be at physical events. Yeah, it was like a, a E3 from home. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Paris, one more question. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. And, and and I don't mean to end on a final question as as a slightly Debbie Downer, but but you know, I I, I try to be honest with with my opinion about everything. So the show was solid. It, it was definitely a solid show that you had today. But um, as I was talking earlier on another show. I felt like this was part one in a story in an ongoing story that needs to continue to be told. Like, I absolutely love that you started the show with Halo Infinite. We see the start screen and you're playing the game. We need to see more of that with your titles, because I feel like when I look at Xbox, when I look back going back to 2013 to where we are right now, you've definitely made tremendous improvements from where we started back then. And I'm, I'm genuinely excited about the future of where the Xbox platform is going. But I still think we have these studio acquisitions. We have they're working on all these titles. We need to see more of an investment in the in the story elements. I want to care about these games. I want to care about these characters. And, and we're starting to see that. Absolutely. You know, you had the, you know, fables coming, things like that. But this wasn't this was only part one, I feel mm-hmm. like like and I'm sure you're not resting on your laurels. But if if I've seen any feedback today, it's like gamers still gamers that are on the fence or not already invested in the ecosystem i don't know if today was enough to convince them but like like i said earlier if you're already in the xbox ecosystem if you're already a game pass subscriber you got the pom-poms out and you are celebrating right now because this looks fantastic the future's bright but i still think people that are on the outside looking in i i've equated it to xbox is kind of in a prove it mode when it comes to Mm -hmm. their exclusive lineup and I still think there's some proving to do, so to speak. Yeah. Like, look, Halo Infinite is absolutely a great start. I've, I've said for a while, it is the flagship for the future of what you're doing. It has to lead the way. And I think this was a good intro to it, but we still need to see more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I love the challenge. I mean, we are absolutely, we want to prove it. We want to be continue to push to do that. And I think, you know, we were very purposeful in how we thought about this event. We wanted to deliver... Uh, you know, show people the campaign, big ga- campaign gameplay for Halo. We know that is our big blockbuster title this holiday, launching with Xbox Series X. And so I felt like we did a good job delivering that, getting people excited. If you're thinking about, if you're a Halo fan, you're going to want to get that game this holiday. And I think yes. we deliver that. And we haven't even showed the multiplayer and all the other stuff there. So um, did we show stuff from our Vita series? Yes. Do we announce five new first party titles? Yes. Did we give a look into the future? Yes. Uh, do we want to continue to show more and adva- announce more? Did, you know, are there a lot of teams, a lot more stuff working on things we haven't talked about? Absolutely. So that's the fun of this business and all, you know, and how we kind of get to tell more, uh, and evolve more, even beyond what we showed today with Fable or with Forza Motorsport or Avowed or, you know, State of Decay 3 or, you know, any of whatever the projects or games are particularly interested in. I think I'm most proud of just the creative diversity of the games and how we're really enabling some of the greatest game makers to go off and realize their full vision, giving them the resources to do that. We didn't talk about Wasteland 3, but for example, like if you talk to Brian Fargo at, at, at Exile, the first thing he'll tell you is being part of Xbox, like one, 
gave them more time, more resources, and now they can go realize their full vision. They would have shipped that game already, and it wouldn't have had all the things that they wanted to put in it. And so that's what we hear from a lot of teams, from Obsidian, from a lot of folks. And so that kind of no compromises approach is how we're thinking about this development and that opportunity, um, and that manifests in different ways. And so um, I think you'll see more of that from us. Uh, and we take the challenge. We're going to continue to have to prove it. We know we do. But, um, you know, if you look at this year alone, the number of first party games that we have shipped and will ship is unprecedented. You've not seen this kind of lineup from us in years. And so whether it's Ori Will the Wisp, whether it's Gears Tactics, uh, whether it's Flight Sim, you know, whether it's, you know, Halo Infinite, uh, there's just so many titles that we've been shipping. Bleeding Edge, there's a long list of things that have come out. Um, and so, you know, we'll continue to deliver that. You're going to see that from us year after year. And, uh, and I think we now have the creative teams and the pipeline to deliver against that. Uh, not all told in one moment, but, uh, but I think for today, I think we feel pretty good about where we are um, and a good look at the future as well. It's cool. fantastic. Yeah, I just want to say uh, thanks, Aaron, for you know taking your time to talk to us. And it's always fun. It's always fun, man, going back and forth with you, man. You know, so hopefully we could do Absolutely. this more again in the future. You know, and uh, and yeah, it was. It, I, I think oh, to me, I think it was a great showcase, and I can't wait for the future, man. So that's great. Appreciate yeah. the feedback, the support. Always great to talk to you guys, and uh, I'll definitely be when you guys online, and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Stay safe. Yeah. Hope the family's safe, and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Awesome. Same to you both.